Uh-oh. What's going on, y'all? My name is Elijah Green. I am with Green Beret Productions, and you're now listening to One Year Later Podcast. The mission with this podcast is to interview couples that I've done videos for in the past just to continue their stories. Um, I think it's very important to understand that your story doesn't end with the wedding. Once you say, I do, uh, once you walk down the aisle, once you have the reception, once you're done partying, there's a whole nother uh, story after that. And I think that too many times we get caught up in the glitz and the glamour of the wedding day and not too much into what happens next. So this is the mission. This is the purpose of this podcast is to have real, realistic conversations about life after you say I do. Um, so first guest is Rico <laughs> and Misha Wilson. Thank you guys for coming. Hey, hey. Thank you guys for coming. How, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing great. Doing good. Doing I'm good. doing good. All right. So uh, basically, the first question that I want to ask you guys is how does it feel to be married? It feels great. It feels the same to me, honestly. Closer. It feels the same to me, honestly, but. It was great to know that I have somebody with me always, mm-hmm. and I know she's mine. <laughs> like, <laughs> I say it's a tag now. Yeah, she's got the Wilson tag. On. Right. <laughs> Honestly, it's so every woman's dream is to be married, right? So mm-hmm. it's like it feels like a goal, a huge goal that I accomplished in life. So, um, you know, you see on Instagram and social media about. Oh, I can't wait for a woman to, or I can't wait for me to be like my husband and my husband and my husband this and my husband that. When I get proposed, I'm going to be a real husband. And now it's like, well, I can say that. (laughs) And it it really does feel like a huge accomplishment. It it feels the same. And part of that is because we've been together for so long. So like nothing changed, like as far as our relationship, like the love just grows stronger. Um, But it feels good to know that we're like one union now. And it feels good to know that God honored, honors marriages. So, um, like, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like it's like marriage is just like a title that's like held on a pedestal. So, um, but yeah, it, it really does feel good. So that's, that's my next question. So what is it with the, the title and like women are so proud to say my husband, like I see the pictures <laughs> and I noticed that a lot of women, <laughs> take pictures with that ring hand, like that, that ring hand, like you get coffee, ring hand, you're driving, all of a sudden you drive with your left hand now. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one is your right hand. Right, right. So what is it about just the, the, the pride of being a wife? Like, what does that mean to right. you? Like, what does a wife mean to you? Um, so I think to answer your first question, I think like woman, um, they're like my husband this and my husband that because they want to, it's, it's a little bit of a brag. Like I got mm-hmm. a ring, I got married, I got the paperwork, you did it. <laughs> I was about to say, hey, and so, you did it. And you did it. Still alone. So it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, look what I, I got. I got a, I got a, I, I've been wifed or I got a ring on it now and you know, I'm better than you or it. And you know, sometimes it could come off that way depending on the woman mm-hmm. and, and maybe they're, they just, it's like, oh, what's a go? I got the ring. But other than that, you know, when I've, the first like two or three months when we got married, I was like, my husband is my husband that, mm. but you're just so excited and so like overjoyed. So it's like, you're excited. So you want to let the world know, like, this is my husband. This is my husband. Right, <laughs> so it's a little right. bit, it's a little bit of a brag mm. mixed with excitement. Um, and it's just like, you're just overjoyed with like the whole marriage concept and having a husband and it's just, it's just exciting. Right. Um, and you said, what was your se- second question again? Um, so what does it mean like to be a wife to you? Like, what does that sound like? Cause usually we use titles and we use that because now this is what it represents. So like being a man means being a provider, being a, a woman means being a nurturer. So what does a wife mean to you? Like what, I, I guess it comes into like yeah. gender role. Right, questions. right, right. So it's like, usually that's what we use those for. Like. If you're a man, you're a woman, if you're a wife or husband, now you have certain expectations to you. Right. So what is the expectations of a wife? And I'm asking you the same question for the husband. <laughs> um, so being a wife, um, I don't know, it, it means a lot to me. So 
So before, maybe like, you know, when you when I was a girlfriend or like a fiance, maybe I felt like I didn't have such a huge responsibility. Like, okay, well, I'm not married, so maybe I don't have to do certain things Mm -hmm. for like my boyfriend or I don't have to cook Mm -hmm. for my boyfriend or, you know, I don't have to be as submissive in a sense. Mm -hmm. So being a wife is literally like kind of just putting all those things to the side and like, you know, hey, I got to hold down the household in a sense, not like financially being the head of the household, but. Um, it's like a title that I cherish. So I need to make sure I look out for him at all times Mm -hmm. and kind of being there more for him in the sense of the time he ever needed me or just, um, and then that, that kind of goes into the same title as a mother too, just being a wife and a mother. Um, but it's just like, kind of like, I don't know, trying to find the words to say, but, um, it, it makes me feel like I have certain goals and it makes me feel I have certain responsibilities Mm -hmm. um like I said like those responsibilities I feel like I didn't have before like if he was just my boyfriend maybe you know I didn't have to cook or I had to clean or I had to make sure like his you know his belly was full and stuff like that but like I got to make sure that I look out for him Mm -hmm. and um like I'm there for him no matter what Right. So it's like, this is like, this is through sickness and through health. And like, this is, this is it. Like, right. like, this is who I have to look out for. Yeah. Like this, who holds my heart. So, right. um, that's what it, it kind of means a little bit more than just like being a girlfriend or a fiance. Right. Um, husband, like she was saying, it makes you feel like you, sh- you have to be a lot better for not only yourself, but her, your family. Um, before, I'm going to say we did things for ourselves, but um, I feel like once you gain that title, you put yourself yourself on a higher pedestal, but them a little bit above you, right. and you, 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 you do things you didn't do before, didn't think you would do before. Right. Um, like, I know she pushes me to be a lot better than I, I was mm-hmm. before yeah. I... Before, <laughs> <laughs> Why she said yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Before I mean, I thought about like doing things, but when I knew that I was gonna make her my wife, it made me a little more driven to do things that I wouldn't have thought I could do before. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know. A husband, a husband makes you want to be a lot stronger than you were. Mm-hmm. I mentally for me, mm-hmm. um, that's something that's very serious to me. A husband, mm-hmm. a wife. So before that, I mean, I always thought about marrying her all the time. But I think when we got to that certain stage, it was like, all right, this is it. Now I got to be better. Now I got to provi- provide for her, my daughter, our future children. Um, I don't know. It just, a husband is just like a Superman to me in the family. So yeah, yeah. It's like Superman. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a, yeah. Okay, so if it's like... If it's like Superman, then what's the kryptonite? Kryptonite? <laughs> kryptonite. What is the kryptonite? What is your kryptonite? What is my kryptonite? I don't know. Hey. Like, <laughs> what is the one thing that you got to make sure that you focus on to keep your family strong? And it's... it's, it's keep and, my family and strong, and not listening to people outside of our relationship. That's my thing. I don't mm-hmm. like... You get people to say, oh, well, she didn't do that. You should do this. Or I don't like taking outside advice if it's right. negative. I mean, right. if it's constructive to help our relationship, I would yeah. maybe think about it. Because I like to do things myself mm-hmm. right. for us. Because mm-hmm. you only can learn from each other, I think, in a relationship. It's outside relationships. That's their relationship. And that's how their relationship is going to go. But it, us is us. Mm-hmm. So you can only learn from each other. Yep. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. So my kryptonite would be outside advice. I don't, <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I find that uh, a lot of times people see themselves within you. Like, I'm going to give you advice based off of how I would handle it. But the one yeah. thing I realized about anything in life that you don't necessarily know how you're going to react, how you're going to uh, be until you're actually in that situation. Right. It's very easy to be like, Oh, girl, I wouldn't let him do this because mm-hmm. that was exactly. me. As soon as they say yeah, that was me. That was me. Exactly. I would never let that happen exactly. or I would never let that pass. And Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, 
I think it is up to us to be like, wait a minute, let me filter this. Let me see if right, this is right. true. first coming from a good place. If that right. person's uh-huh. coming from a good place and it's coming from love, then I'd be like, okay, let me at least listen, even yeah. though I feel attacked. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to say, this is my life, it's not yours. Right. Um, and I realize we got to be able to take it and also give it. Like, we got to be able to take the negativity and also let them know in a kind way, like, listen, I understand you may have my good interests at heart, right. mm-hmm. but your advice is not serving me. Yep. It, it's not, my situation is a little bit different than how right, you right, handle right. it, and, but I just want to let you know, I, I appreciate it. Right. Like, I don't, I don't want to, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't want you to think that I don't value your opinion, right? But understand because the one thing I realized when it comes down to relationship advice, people are gonna do what they want to do. Yeah, exactly. People yeah. gonna do what exactly. they want to do, and a lot of people get too emotionally attached to other people. Yes, a hundred percent invested. <laughs> Way too attached. Invested, too attached. Invested, I'm like, like, I'm like, wait a minute, why are you getting so mad that you told her to leave him? Yes, yeah. that's her. It's her situation. decision. It's her life. How is it affecting you? Is it? Is it making you money? Is it not making you money? Is it contributing to your bank account? Is it contributing to your health? Like, what is it doing right. for you? What are you getting out of being so invested in somebody else's relationship? Yeah. I agree with that. I yeah. think it's, it's, I think it's a little weird that people go to the extremes in certain measures just to figure out, you know, or be affected by what somebody else's actions are doing in their relationship. Yeah. It's like you have your own life to live. Yeah. Because and, and and another thing I realized about relationships is that. A lot of times, especially for women, when they're venting about their their man, their husband, their boyfriend, yep. um, it's a difference between I want advice and I just want you to listen. Right. And I think it's up to the person that's listening to be like, wait a minute, does she want advice? Do he want advice or does she just want somebody right. to listen? Um, and then sometimes you got to ask, like, do you mind if I give you some advice? Mm-hmm. Are you open? Like, right, right, off, right. like, are you open to some advice right yeah. now? And then now it's up to you be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. But you can say after that, I, honestly, I just wanted to vent. Right. You know, I just wanted you to listen. And most of the time, that's 99% of the time, you just want somebody to yep. listen. You just want somebody like to listen. You, and sometimes you already know the answer. Yeah. Or you already know what your friend is going to say or how they're going to respond, especially mm-hmm. if it's a you better leave him type of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right. But no friends wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I was waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. now he believe left him. On the floor all the time. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Listen, so, y'all, I ain't I would, perfect. That wouldn't right. be me. Yeah. He won't be leaving his exactly. on my floor. But it's like then they vent and they sometimes you give advice after they vent like, "Girl, let me tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that." And they don't respond. It's like, right. you know, but like you said, it's like, hey, I'm just venting to you at this point. But I think it's important for you to give that person a heads up. Like, I'm venting to you. Like, I don't need mm-hmm. you to say anything else because right, right. I just need to get off my chest. And then maybe like when I'm done, I hit this text message is gone. The thought is gone. I moved on to something else. Right. But if you respond back with like, I don't want to go back and forth about the subject or the topic. I just want to get it off my shoulders and be done with it. So right. I think that's a good valid point to ask. Like, hey, do you want me to give you any advice? Are you open? Um, so that person can know, like, you know, if they are like, if they want to receive it or your other friend will be offended if you like, well, I don't really care about what you're saying. <laughs> right, right, right. So. Okay. So let's go back a little bit. Right. How did y'all even time. meet? How did we meet? Like, right. Cause how you don't know. Like, it was long, long time. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was, always give my side. That's so funny. Okay. So, and I put this on our, we had like a wedding page on Z- Zillow about mm-hmm. like how we met like so our family and friends can see when they go um reserve or rsvp for the way right. so ricardo and i <laughs> we met in 2008 i think <laughs> 2008 june like i think it was like june 29th 2008 mm-hmm. so i was 15 years old <laughs> uh. i was with a friend um and we it was it was like, I think it was my sophomore year, my freshman year of high school, either freshman or sophomore. I think I was going into my sophomore year. My I freshman just year. You <laughs> yes. Okay, so what's the age difference? It's three and a half years. Okay, <laughs> but I just graduated. Yep. But. So he had just graduated in so June. What's, what's the term for a guy cougar? Because there's cougar yeah. for a woman. What's the term for guys, though? I, don't know. I feel like anything over five years is a little bit extreme. In in that age, yes, yeah. twenty five to thirty is all. I think right, all so it like, really just depends. I mm-hmm. think when you're twenty five, like when you hit twenty five, all bets are off. Like you can date 
obviously not not a 40 year old like you don't want to go there but i think like 25 if you if you're 25 you know dating a guy that's 30 i get it that's fine mm -hmm. but when you're 25 and he's like 35 and you're 25 he's almost 40 the the gap of the age is just his his like ideas and his thoughts of relationships is just going to be totally different from mm -hmm. yours cuz he's way older than you his values of a woman is probably more old school than you what you would be used to he's looking for some woman who can cook clean and you know that's just always like the idea of dating a, a man that's older than you but it's right. not always the case i mean i've never personally known anyone who's dating a man that's like 15 years older than them in my age my generation yeah. so i can't speak for um you know everybody mm -hmm. <laughs> but i do know uh you know for the most part older men are always looking to seek they they want you to be some this older woman in a sense like they want you to grow up faster and forget your 20s being my age range with me right, and right, you know right. it's like you know it, it, i think it you should just keep it safe with the five-year age range so yeah i can mentally both be on the same path and um mm -hmm. you know have the same values and like relationship standards um because sometimes when a man is older than you he don't want you going out with your friends and he feel like yeah, I just don't y'all y'all in two totally different generations. So it's right. like it's kind of it, it really just depends though. He, he could be the right one. He can just he can totally understand. But you know, m most most of the times then they're just like it just won't mesh. <laughs> right, right. So I'm sorry, I, I, had, I had cut into your story. It's yeah, right. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's okay. Meant, so but no, it was 15. right. I'm sorry. So I was 15. Um, it was like the last day of school or something like that. Or maybe I think I had summer school, mm. unfortunately. So I had just came back from registering <laughs> for summer school and I was with my friend mm. and we were chilling on her, chilling in front of her house. And she was friends with Rico's friend. Mm. <laughs> so we were just chilling and we had just became friends that, that school year. So I didn't know her prior to, and I, you know, I'm just now getting to know her street and I happened to live like three blocks away from her. So okay. she was like, Oh yeah, this is my friend, um, Tony. Um, and this is my friend T. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, I'm saying hi, how they doing? And I never met them before. Mm -hmm. So I think I saw them prior too, because we all lived in the same neighborhood. Right. But, um, you know, they introduced themselves to me. And um, she's like, oh, yeah, we live down the street from each other and we've been on each other, et cetera. And then um, Rico just happened to be in the back seat of the van. So T was driving. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> T was 16 in a purple years <laughs> Uh, you know it the was the, it, it's the tan uh the, tan the dodge or i don't okay. know what it was a chrysler Shelly whatever Venture. yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so t was driving he pulled up to say what up to um my friend at the time mm. and um <laughs> the, the door slide back and <laughs> tony, <laughs> tony was in the back seat nut was in the back seat mm. and rico was in the back seat right. <laughs> i think bubby was there too i'm not sure and I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. <laughs> probably was going bowling. Who knows? <laughs> so um not say hey to me first and I say hi to him. And then I think Rico shot. Wrong light skin. Wrong light skin. She wanted the other one. <laughs> and then um I don't even remember what happened. It was so long ago, but Rico even must have said something to me first. And so he said, hi. I'm like, hi. He was like, what's your name? And I'm like, my name is Isha. He's like, oh. I'm like, what's your name? <laughs> he like, my name Rico. <laughs> your game was not strong back then, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your game was not strong. So, you had to get something, man. I'm here now, though. <laughs> so the door slammed, or closed, rather, and they pull off. And my friend go, he is so cute, Misha. You should talk to him. <laughs> I never Did you forget. Have the yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was this was oh eight, man. Wow. Oh eight, like wow, years ago. But she ended up texting Tony and you know, we you know, did some little matchmaking and mm -hmm. you know, I think he texted me or I text him two yeah. days later on Tony's phone because this man ain't have no phone. I have oh, <laughs> my God. I have That's no similar phone. to the scrub video. You go try to holla at me for passing the seat in your phone. <laughs> So this man had no phone, so I'm texting him from Tony's phone, and he we just vibing like, oh yeah. So what? Do you, like we're asking general questions. I'm like 15, he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, you cute or whatever. He's like, yeah, you cute too. <laughs> and we're just like we we just kind of kicked it off from that point. From that that point. was that was how we met. That's from the first time I saw him. <laughs> but do you have a different story? You got a different way. You, you remember that? It's similar. I. What did I say to you? 
I don't even I remember say? you said hi. You ain't or you know what? I, I was, think because the thing was she was talking to Tony and I was, was just standing to off to the side, like being shy because I didn't know them. Yeah. So and she, like we I was like literally like three feet away from the car. So I'm like, this is so awkward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she was like um talking to him and she's like, Oh, this is my friend Misha. I think she said that. And I was like and then I, think I was like, Hi Misha. Yeah. Like I think you said hi Misha and I'm like what do you want to say hi to me for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, guards up. Like, what you trying to spit game? <laughs> but yeah. then I was like, oh. And I was like, what's your name? That's when he told me. But that's that's how we met. <laughs> okay. June of 2008. <laughs> <laughs> and you got, that was it right there? You didn't have a... That's, that's she's, she's accurate with the <laughs> description of how we met. Because <laughs> right, you said, I'm going to tell my side. And I thought you, you had know, a, it's, it's, it's always the same. It's, it's similar. the same. It's similar. But I think you might we, tweak it a little bit. We always but, say something yeah. like the introduction. But yeah. I think if you would have asked us this in 2016 or 2000, when the memory is a little more fresher. <laughs> fresh, it would have been different. But as the years go, because we always were like, that's not what I said. Right, <laughs> but right. now it's like, yeah, that's, as a matter of fact, I think y'all did say that. Right, right. <laughs> so, you might get a better description from Tony. <laughs> I, can see, I, I can see him making it down. Like, no, I ain't going nothing like that. He's always Man. like, yo, he's always like, if it wasn't for me, y'all, for me, they, y'all, y'all better think. He always say that. He always say that. He didn't that. say that at the wedding, did he? No. They was all quiet. <laughs> it was. It was time to speak. I forgot who but said But we hit, I hit, I hit Gigi up first. I had him hit. I had Tony hit Gigi up first yeah. to ask her about her. Uh-huh. Okay. So Gigi ain't hit, nah. Okay. Okay. Maybe so, that's what it yeah. was. Okay. So you had a middleman yeah. to make sure the. Co- okay. The so maybe he yeah, initiated. I was, like, I was like, who is but that? We were both. Yeah. That's what it was. That's what our debate was. It was about who initiated it first when the van pulled off. Oh, and I'm I like, did. at the same time, we were having the same conversation saying, Oh, he is. Let me let him, let me talk to him. Let me let me text him. And he was saying, "Yo, she cute. Let me text her." So right, right, right. <laughs> it was like that was how we were just trying to figure out who initiated the first. Let me reach out to that yeah. person first. Did y'all think about marriage at fifteen, eighteen? Like, was that on your minds, or it was just like at this age? I don't even know if I'm going to college. Like, I don't know. Me, I actually well, let me back it up. Relationships in general, because usually when you're young, you like. I don't want to be tied down. I just want to have fun. Like, was relationships on your mind? Because usually relationship leads to marriage. Right, right, right. But first, was really relationships on your mind? Right. Me, yes and no. I think, because my parents growing up, they were always together. Like, Mm -hmm. together since they were 16, 17. So I always had that, I want to be like them. Mm -hmm. Family together. But then when you get older, you start being with your friends. You start hanging out. Right. They talking to different girls. You like, oh, I want to do that. But then when you meet one, it's like, I don't know. I already, I saw myself with her for a while. I, mm. I didn't think about, especially when she actually decided to actually be my girl. <laughs> <laughs> she was oh, playing games well, for a, a while. That's a whole other story, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I chased around for a while, so I knew I wanted to be with her. Mm. I didn't know how long it'd last, but. <laughs> <laughs> I right. wanted to try it out. Yeah. So yeah, I think relationships. I thought about marriage younger, but I think as you get older, that stuff kind of dies away, mm-hmm. like fades away. But it's something I always thought about. Right. She probably. Right. I, I mean, this is like a given for women, right? Like when we're like ten years old, we're playing like bride and groom with our Barbies. Right, like right, we're right. writing down like our like our wedding guest list. In our our first dance song, like, and we're just dreaming of ourselves in wedding dresses. So, like, that's just, that's something that's just, like, we're, like, it's just destined for us. Like, it's something that we want to do because it's what we see on TV. And princesses started off, like, growing mm-hmm. up watching Cinderella and stuff like that and finding her Prince Charming. Like, things like that influence us as young girls. Right. Um, so, that's a given. Like, we, we want to get married now when it actually comes into us getting into relationship and marriage sounds scary at 16 and 17. Nobody thinks about marriage that young. It's like, you know, you think about being in a long-term relationship, Mm -hmm. but you don't think about actually like, like sealing it, like making sure like this is solid. This is like permanent. So Mm -hmm. like commitment, it's like, nobody thinks about like long-term commitment. Like you just are still learning yourself. You don't even, you're not, you don't even know who you are yet. (laughs) So let alone like trying to like, find yourself and be in a long-term relationship and have all those thoughts in your head at the same time. It's like, no. Yeah. Um, 
when I when me and him first got together, um, I don't know. It's like I didn't I didn't know how long we we're gonna be together. I'm like, you know, she maybe really like it. <laughs> <laughs> such a lie. Really such like a it. lie. Um <laughs> he's lying. <laughs> but um it's like because I was still in high school. I was only a sophomore. Mm. So I'm like, okay, well, is this like the thing they do? He was already graduated. So mm. I still had to like get out of my, like I was still in my high school mentality. Like mm. <laughs> wanted to be like the cool girl, wanted to be like like the pretty girl or, you know, whatever, whatever the high school mentality is. But I, w- I wanted to be that popular and I, like have, being in a relationship was lame. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It was like cute just for Valentine's Day for photos. Yeah. But so like initially, yes, when we got together, I'm like, okay, I don't know, like, you know, how this is going to work. Right. Like I said, I had to go through my high school phase and grow. But it's like, I think we'll really have like when I when I graduated, like and we were still together. We went to prom. We had our, mm. our senior, my, my senior prom. <laughs> Um, but I'm like, okay, like, you know, then we, we even had like, and I turned 18. So I think that's like when I, it took a couple years, but that's, that's when like really registered, like, okay, mm. well, I'm graduated. Um, you know, I think we're going to be together for a long time. So I don't think we like initially started talking about marriage until like probably when I want to say like when I was like 20, I was like still with my mom. So I'm like, mm. oh, when you know, we, we, you'll say, oh, I'll be your, you'll call yourself wifey and stuff like that right, yeah, <laughs> or yeah, my yeah. hubby. But right. like when I was like approaching 20, 21, I'm like, okay, well, well, you better marry me. <laughs> yeah. That's when you start saying, well, you better marry me. Cause before that you're like, no, nah, you're too young to be married at, at 19 and 20 years old. I'm like, mm. no, there's no way I'm going to be married that young. But you know, we moved out together mm. to our first apartment. I'm like, okay, well, our, this has to be a goal. Like, I want to get married. Like we, we need to get married. So I think that doesn't really, that didn't really hit me until I turned like 2021. All right. What about you, Rico? As far as marriage. how did you feel about relationships around that time? Feel about relationships? I don't know. See, <laughs> the thing, I didn't, I like relationships. I like being mm-hmm. in relationships. When I met her, I was, in one. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. So, Get out there. <laughs> so that like one ended uh, because of her. Uh, uh, but she didn't, uh, like uh, uh, <laughs> she didn't even like me. Wait, so, so my relationship that, ended honestly. because of her. And then she didn't like me. Wait, let's dig deeper into that. That's interesting. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so you came in was like, you know what? I don't want you to be with her. <laughs> I don't want you either. <laughs> so I want you to be single, so I'm ready to be with you. Was that it? Not at all. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> friends on to me for I a wanted year. to be friends. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm not ready to be in a relationship right now. Right. <laughs> like, I was like, what, six, so 15 we met. And then we didn't get together until August 24th of 2009. So okay. that's the day we met, which was June of 2008. Yeah. So later. a year later. <laughs> wow. So like, you know, I'm in high school. Like, you know, there's like a lot of cute guys around. I'm like, okay, these guys are cute. And mm. we're all just friends. <laughs> they wasn't like, it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know, this is, I'm like, well, he's another cute guy friend. So, you know, he'll just be a friend. And then like, I don't know. Our friendship was so different though. <laughs> so I'm like, well, let me just, he's Yo. just another friend. Like yeah. the guys I go to high school with, they're friends. He's just another friend. So I'm like, well, I don't know if he's trying to be girlfriend and boyfriend because I don't want to do that right now. I, don't that I was right trying. Now. I, he was <laughs> trying. He was trying. You know, he was trying. Mm. But I'm like, oh. And then I don't know. But our friendship was so different because I had guy friends. But it was like they had a crush on me type. But Rico, mm. it, he, I knew that he liked me a lot. But he, he, there was like never no pressure or never like he he just went with the flow whatever like i will lead i will follow and he will lead like you know what i mean like if i (laughs) i step right he'll step back like it like you know he never was like he never forced me or pressured me and and i'm like that like really opened my eyes because back in you know how high school days like guys are just just coming out after girls for one thing or Mm. like when you gonna come over next and you know how like that was in high school days and Rico was never like that Mm. like I can tell him like feminine stuff I remember (laughs) he used to hate that treat me like like her girlfriend yes I did I I treated him like a girlfriend so did she accidentally be like girl I mean no I mean yeah so it's like oh Rico is Rico (laughs) 
And it's like, oh, he's just Rico. That's all I used she to say always say that. Like, Wait, so Rico. do nice guys really finish last? I mean, I mean, he <laughs> finished <laughs> first now, but back then, was that really what it was? I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, kind of. Like yeah. girls wanted bad guys. Like we wanted mm. like somebody who got a little bit of hood in them. Or like you know what I mean? Mm. Or like I don't know. But back then, like when you're young, you want like these bad guys. You want these guys that got a little bit thug or a little bit hood in them. And it's that's still the same thing with this generation. I know that because that's how my cousin is, and she's 18. Mm. <laughs> like just the things she's posting on social media. I'm like, girl, like I already know that was me. Like right. a little bit of me in high school, and that was everybody I went to high school with. You are in that same mentality. Mm. You will outgrow it. Yeah. <laughs> So, but it's like nice guys. Like, don't nobody want to know nice guys. Like, oh, they're lame, or you know what I mean. It's like <laughs> it's sad. Like you it's think sad. that it way. It really is. It's like because... they're lame. Like, oh, he's just like, oh, that's just so and so. I think that's where that that's just Rico term came from. Oh, that's just Rico. Like you know, <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> I know. That's just Rico. Like, <laughs> but at the same time, like if a girl can really just, it's like I don't know. It, it's <laughs> sometimes we want the bad guys temporarily because. It seems like they're they don't chase after us as much as we're chasing after them. And then the guys that do want us, they're chasing after us and we're like, Okay, we can keep them in our pocket. And I see we that a lot. They're... I see that a lot on social media. <laughs> when girls be like, Okay, I'm single now. Like <laughs> yep. if I curved you or if I left you on red, <laughs> hit me up. Hit me up. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Like, wow. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's sad that it's like that. But that's like being grown a grown woman like please i'll grow that mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's a trait you should have had back when you were younger like you know if you're like in your 30s saying stuff like that i mean to each his own but it's like you know at a certain point you gotta be like hey i'm ready to like find me like if the guy i'm talking to i'm or the guy I was in a relationship with is, didn't work out or I'm finding myself dating here and dating there and it's not working out, I'm not going to continue to be like an open market. Hey, hit me up. Like, no, I'm going to find myself, get myself together. I'm grown. I got to handle right. myself and, you know, just take time to myself. So, right. but yeah, in high school, that was the thing. Like, oh yeah, I'm single. Let me, let me keep my joints. That was the thing. Joints, <laughs> yeah. The more, joints. Hey, but, but the thing is, <laughs> we got... We got looked up as bad guys yeah. for that. Yeah. Like, of course, right. for men, the more you got, the more cool you are. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and then I started realizing that I guess it was kind of a double standard when it yeah. came down to, like, when women do it, when men do it. Right. But the reason is because men look at women as up here. Yeah. The and queen so is we're like, constantly mm -hmm. being told that women are up here, men are down here, mm -hmm. then we don't want you to do the same thing that we're doing. Because right, we're right, still right. trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. And, you know, being a little kid, girls are always a lot more mature. They're taller at first. Mm -hmm. So we're always taught that women have it figured out faster than men do. So right. if we're messing up, that's because we still got some catching up to do. Right, right, right. But if y'all messing up, some it's something like, going on. Yeah, it's like something, wait, she ain't got her stuff bit, together. Hold on now. There's something Red else. <laughs> That's where the conversation used to come from. Like, okay, how many people did you talk to prior? Yeah. To, mm -hmm. You know, now we grown, that conversation would never happen. Yeah, I can't see nobody over yeah. the age of twenty five asking that. asking that question. Yeah. But I get where it comes from at mm -hmm. a young age. Um I'm definitely. So yeah, that's um Fifteen, eighteen, y'all hear now? Yeah, hear now. Yep. I hear now. I mean, what? Yeah. And it's, it's, when <laughs> I really just to go back to how we made it official, um, it was like <laughs> I'm just thinking about the story. So, like, obviously, like Rico wanted to be in a relationship from like day one, and I was mm -hmm. like playing games, of course, right. putting him in the friend zone. And then this guy I was talking to, I was like, um, I was like, hey, I want to. Like, I, I didn't know if I wanted to be in a relationship. It was like, because Rico was still a friend. I was friends with him. And then I'm like, he don't ever want to be in a relationship. Like, we were 16 years old. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't ever want to be in a relationship. And, like, I just, we just weren't vibing anymore. And then, you know, Rico was still, like, by my side the whole time. Even with the times me playing games. <laughs> there. I'm just, he I'm was just there. there. I'm just there. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm <just there>. like, <laughs> and I'm like Never you need it's me. like, you know what? I had, like, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, I had a moment at 16 years old. I'm like, you know what? I think we need to be in a relationship. Like, you need to be my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm like, see? You, yeah. I, at that moment, I'd be like, you know what? I don't even know like, if no, I want to do it anymore. Like, you know, you, like, had, you, know you had me waiting for so you long. Been, right? You know? been waiting a long time. And yeah. we just, you know, we need to make it official. Mm -hmm. And then I think my mentality instantly changed. And that was going into my junior year. 
like a month before my junior year started. So, right. and I think that's just like the rest was history at that point. You know, just as mm. far as relationship wise, obviously it was a, it was a lot of growing, of course, right? Still mm. young. <laughs> right, right. Um, so you know, there was still like a like a lot of growing, like I said. Still trying to find my like I'm junior, but a lot better than what I was as a freshman, of course. Right, right, right. But like each, you know, the older you get, the more you find yourself. So, um, but yeah, so I think it just took that time for me to be like, okay. So I was going to be 17 in that winter. So it, it took a minute, but mm. I don't know. It, it feels like the closer you get to like maybe 18, 19, 20, you kind of kind of know what you want but like 16 15 that's like super young like i don't you know i don't expect like layla my daughter to be like oh i want to be with him for the rest of my life at like 15 no. like uh, no <laughs> like you need to think about that finish right high now. school and you know decide what you want to do for your career and you know so make sure this guy is a nice guy and he's really there for you and really about you so mm-hmm. and that's what that's what how rico was so i'm like okay he's really about me yeah, <laughs> yeah. like it took a minute but He's so there. if 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 you would go back, would you change that? Like, would you be more so like? I really think me... having a friendship is so important. Like mm-hmm. beforehand, like I like could like it. Like we got, I got to share like like intimate moments with him, like mm-hmm. as a friend, and yeah. he was like okay with it. He was like he would just listen to my stories, and we'd be on the phones like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, but we were in a relationship, mm-hmm. and it's like we built that friendship, and we learned each other's personalities like for that year so mm-hmm. i think that was like that's super important so many people like date and talk to each other for two or three months and then hop right into relationship not to say there's nothing bad with them some people there some people are married like who's you know talk to each other or know each other for like six weeks or six months rather um and love but sometimes sight. yeah love at first yeah. sight but um sometimes it's not always like that especially when you're young like really mm-hmm. young like that it's like I feel like you gotta see what this guy is about, and you know the same applies for you know vice versa. You gotta see what this girl is about. So I feel like a friendship is so important for us. Like I'm gonna push that all the time with Layla or any of the future kids of ours. Like please have a friendship first. Mm-hmm. Um, hang out, do friend things, and you know you can it, just try to find each other first through a friendship and learn each other's personalities and how you communicate and you know, before you start throwing in your all and your, all your feelings. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't change the friendship part right. at all. I think that was the reasons how it led up to, you know, I'm sure sure he would have like, oh, let's, you know, date faster. But yeah. um, sometimes it's good to kind of take your, your time and pace um, with the friendship. I think it's important to have a friendship first, though. Right. So how do you hold on to that friendship in marriage? Because I think that's the number one thing right. that people don't understand is that you have to be friends mm-hmm. while you're married. Because right. usually you think that, you know, everything's going to happen organically. Mm-hmm. But once you get into it, you realize you got to actually work for it. Like right. You got to actually take that time to be like, oh, wait, we got to we got to go out. We got to have a date. Yeah. We got to talk. Like right, let's, right, right. When the last time we actually talked, like right. not just talk while we watching TV, but when the last time we looked in each other's eyes right. and was like, how you feel? Like, actually ask that question. Right, right, how do you feel? So, how do you hold on to that friendship while you're married? Like, you actually work for it. Like, is there anything that y'all do that's very, like, mindful? And, mm-hmm. like, do you have date nights and stuff like that? Right. So, Rico knows that, like, he will always say, so every night, before, like, no matter how crazy the day is, and, like, if we haven't got a shit, like, initially when we when i first come home from work or like he works overnights now mm-hmm. so i don't see him as much and i'll come home at like 5 five thirty, and he's leaving out like an hour so we try to make like i try to take time before i do anything else just to talk about our day like mm-hmm. let's talk let's catch up like let's share each other like like let's share funny memes that we thought was funny or let me tell you about what happened at work and you tell me about what happened at work and mm-hmm. and i think that like that's how you keep a friendship kind of like acting like your friend you text your friend like girl let me tell you what happened and let me tell you about this let me tell you Mm -hmm. about that let me show you this picture isn't it so funny like that's how we are still like we still like yo you funny like we say that to each other all the time like that's just how our our, our, like it it continues to be that way and it's just natural so Mm -hmm. it it will feel weird if like you know if if i came in the house and didn't say nothing about my day or vice versa like what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah yeah so, automatically knows she gotta ask yeah. <laughs> something wrong or something, yeah. or I'm, <laughs> something, or wrong. something work me up or i just don't want to talk and mm. but like that's good though that we know that like mm. if we don't say nothing to each other we know that something is wrong mm. and some relationships become so distant that people think it's normal like not to communicate not to talk about your day and not to say nothing or go in the next room and close the door and 
That's it. Yeah. So, but to keep that, I, like we always have to keep that. We know that if something, if we don't talk about our day or if we didn't laugh or, you know, some like we didn't have no type of communication throughout the day, then we know that something, something is wrong. And we, we acknowledge that and we still do not, you know, I hope we always feel that way and think that, have that mentality. And then he used to always think I was weird. So, so having a kid is a struggle, as you know. It's hard to get any type of communication in and TLC mm. and affection. Mm-hmm. Nothing, because your child is a natural cock walker. They just are. Like, they don't. Oh, she passed. They're like, just, like, <laughs> like, what? She, like, they sense. That's no hormones <laughs> coming. <laughs> they sense, you know? like, any type of touch or any sense. Any, <laughs> I remember Layla. Funny story. Um, if if me and Rico ever kissed or like gave each other a hug, she would come out the room up, just throw a toy at his head, like she'll she whack him. Hit me with a toy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what? When she get older, you see her kissing a guy, throw a toy at her head. <laughs> That's what you did. That so is your mom. Do that all the time. It's just it's she's crazy. She's super obsessed with her mom and dad. That's just sad. But <laughs> she's just she like she, throw a toy yeah, at you. she just would whack him. Like she'll just you she'll literally turn around and give us this look and she'll go find an mm-hmm. object to throw at him. It was so uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> when she like, get older, she's like, I didn't do that really. <laughs> right. Like, yes, you she did. did it. Right. <laughs> so but at night, like when we'll lay down and the day is over with and she sleep, I would be like, So let's talk. And he'd be like, You're so weird. <laughs> but I, I always did that. Mm. Like I always would be like, We haven't checked in in a minute. Like, what's new? Like, you know what I mean? Like on that yeah. type of level. Like, hey, yeah, we yeah. talked about work and the day flew. But like it's a different type of connection when the kids to bed and there's no distractions. It's bedtime. Our room is like where we communicate. So right. I'll check in and be like, Oh, so so what's new? And I'll like mm. ask some random questions. That's just like how I keep like my communication open with them but right but yeah that's kind of like keeping the doors of communication open all the time so knowing mm-hmm. when you're not yeah. communicating something is not working something is up and you gotta check it and we do a good job at that he does a good job with me and mm-hmm. vice versa we're like mm-hmm. what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah but she a brat so it's like yeah. i always <laughs> she, <laughs> she don't get her way is yeah bad <laughs> <laughs> It's not that bad. So, yeah. It's not that bad? You don't think so? It is. <laughs> that but that's been day one, though, so I'm used to it. Okay. <laughs> so, so you know how to navigate through it because yeah. it's used to you it. Know. She always, like, it's been her name in my phone since forever, like, my niece Brat. Like, <laughs> and was, it hasn't yeah, changed since for years. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, and then you said, you mentioned, like, date night. So... I think that's super important to continue mm-hmm, yeah. to date each other in a relationship because right. it's like you get so wrapped up in like the day and work and mommy mode and daddy mode. It's like you don't even find time for each other. And then like I feel like a wall, if you don't find time for each other with a date night or with any type of communication or just affection, it's like a wall like slowly builds in between your relationship and you don't even notice it and it starts to become a norm. And then it's just like you guys grow distant from each other Mm -hmm. because you're not taking the time to spend time with each other. So I think a date night is so important. Like even if you can do like once or twice a month, I wish we could do it more. Mm -hmm. But um, it's like it's kind of like a recharge in a sense. Mm -hmm. Um, Like sometimes, you know, if you don't have a date night in a while or, you know, the stress of work and the stress of parenthood and school or whatever, it gets the best of you. And you're just like frustrated. And it's like, well. Let me take a breather. Let's do a date night. And it's like, I don't know. When we go on a date, it's like, it's, it's I still get bashful sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it's only because we don't get that much alone time because we are parents and we do work. So when we have mm-hmm. a date night, it just kind of gives me that, um, like, that reconnection back in my mind. And, um, like, kind of like, a, let me know. Like, this is why we do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. 